Welcome to the Richard Hansen Show. Today, Rich will be delivering an awesome message speaking on technology, neuromarketing, and mankind's future, giving seven keys to have a world-class year starting today. How to overcome fear, operate at peak performance, pursue your dream and purpose, and so much more. We hope you enjoyed today's message, and here's your host, Richard Hansen. Come on, come on. What's up, guys? Super excited to be able to come to you wherever you are in this great wide world and talk to you about technology, neuromarketing, and mankind's future. I once heard it said that the very humans that design tools now have the tools designing humans. And I couldn't agree more with that statement. So I want to start off this show by asking you a question. I know we all love to hear questions because it provokes something in us that might not be currently there. But I want to ask you if you've ever watched a scary movie and later regretted it. I know I have. I remember as a kid watching Nightmare on Elm Street and being so scared that I couldn't even sleep that night. You see, I imagined that what I saw on television was really going to happen. You know what I'm talking about. Your whole life just seems to flash before your very eyes. Now, this may seem like a crazy illustration about my childhood, but don't we all like talking about our childhood? But I'm sharing this for a really important reason. Because have you ever heard the expression, garbage in, garbage out? You see, whatever you're putting into your life is what's going to flow out. So if you are constantly putting positive, good, wonderful things into your life, that's what's going to spill over into the lives of others. But on the other side of that paradox is for those that put into their life negative and things that provoke unkindly responses in others, we're going to reap what we sow. You see, one of the biggest keys to success that I have ever found is knowing what to feed your mind, your body, and your spirit. See, we got to be feeding ourselves quality stuff so that we can put out an epic performance. Isn't that what we all want to be World changers in our generation, because world changers are those that separate themselves from the mindset of mediocrity, and they learn to develop the mindset of mastery. I've heard it said that if you are to master anything in life, that it requires 10,000 hours. Think about that over the course of the last five years of your life. What have you devoted your life to? Oftentimes, we spend so much of our lives never accomplishing anything of eternal value. And the time that we spent kicking back watching television, though there's nothing wrong with television, could have been used to master a skill, something that we could use in the coming days. Now, I want to fast forward for a moment because just the other day, I was having trouble going to sleep. But this time it wasn't because I was watching any kind of scary movie. Believe it or not, I want you to hear me now. I was watching the news. Now I know what you're going to say. Rich, you should have not been watching the news because all the news wants to propagate is fear and all these kind of things. And you're true about that. But let me explain. One of the media's greatest sales tactic is to instill fear into our lives. Because they know if they can use fear to control our lives, then we're going to be consumer-driven by it. See, I heard this expression a while back that struck me. And it was this concept of neuromarketing. And neuromarketing is a term that was coined by a professor in, in marketing named Al Smith in 2002. And it refers to this new field or area of marketing that explores consumers' sensory motive, cognitive, and effective response to marketing stimuli. 
Now, according to Wikipedia's description of neuromarketing, researchers use technology. I want you to think about this, such as functional magnetic resonance in imaging to measure changes in the activity of a person's brain to learn why consumers make the decisions they do and what part of the brain is telling them to do it. Think about that. Everything that we see on social media, everything that we see on the news, everything that we see on the big screen is all designed to provoke a stimuli, to provoke a response. And one of the biggest responses, because they know that consumers are going to react on that is to use fear. Now, you see, fear is one of the basic instincts of human beings to survive. Therefore, fear relates to our ability for survival. Now, do I have enough to eat? Or will I have enough money when I retire? Or is this world really safe? You see, in this respect, fear-based advertising is effective because it taps into our primal concerns for survival. But I believe we're not just called to teach people how to survive, but to thrive in any environment, situation, or economy. In this way, the media is a powerful tool in shaping the landscape of a nation because it has the ability to mold the minds of men. On the other hand, it can be used as a weapon of mass destruction to break down society through the power of fear. So the best way to overcome this barrage of negativity that plagues society is to come into the opposite spirit. And that spirit is called love. You see, love has an extraordinary ability in causing ordinary people to accomplish amazing things. In essence, God adds his super onto your natural. I want to say that again. God wants to add his super onto your natural. You are a natural man. You are a natural woman. You might have a natural business. You might have natural instincts. But when the super of God comes on that natural, then what was commonly called impossible all of a sudden now becomes possible. You know, it doesn't take a rocket science to realize the world is in trouble. But until we stop mumbling and complaining and offer real hope and solutions, we're going to just settle for these lower level concerns for survival. What do I mean by that? We continue to buy into the lie of false evidence appearing real. Fear of ISIS, fear of Ebola, fear of an economic collapse, fear of racial riots. It's fear, fear, fear. Enough is enough. You see, one of the words for crisis in Japanese is a twofold meaning. Now, the one is chaos, destruction, calamity, everything that we're all familiar with, right? But on the other side of that paradox is opportunity. And I want to declare to those that are listening today, if you have eyes to see beyond the turmoil in society, And if you will make a step in a positive direction, you're going to enter into a world of limitless possibilities. Imagine the limits coming off your life, the limits coming off your marriage, the limits coming off your business, the limits coming off of what was humanly impossible prior to that moment, all of a sudden now, you are able to skyrocket to success. You are able to blast off in another orbit beyond anything that we have ever seen. You see, creativity and innovation is about to enter onto the world stage of politics, technology, business, entertainment, and every social arena. You see, change is going to happen at the speed of thought. Let me say that again. Change is going to happen at the speed of thought. Therefore, embrace that new idea. Take hold of last night's dream. Get going on that new business because an idea not executed is nothing more than an illusion, and it's insanity to continue to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result. My friend, seize the day. Regardless of the critics out there, this is the world's greatest hour to shine. Who cares about the critics? 
They don't count. It's the men and the women that are in the arena, the arena of life, the arena of business, the arena of politics, the arena of their sphere of influence that has their face marred with blood, sweat, and toil that have put in the work to get to where they are. Champions aren't made in the ring, my friend. They're made in the back corners, in the daybreak hours when everyone else is sleeping. Champions are awake. They're executing that plan. They're implementing that new idea. They're doing the work that no one else is willing to do, and that is why they are reaping the results that most will only dream of. See, I believe in you. I believe in the real you. Not the one the media says. Not the one your family nor your friends say. Not even the one you often hide behind. You know what I'm talking about. The false self. No, I believe in the real you. The one God intended you to be. The one that's filled with hope for humanity. Now it's your turn to shine. There have been others that have gone ahead of you that have passed the baton. Their ceiling is now your platform to launch out into the great unknown. Why stand on the bank shivering? Why die in the place of complacency when you, my friend, have been called to accomplish something that no one else has been called to accomplish? You see, if you check out premature, the world in existence is going to miss you because it was only yours to fulfill. You see, it's time that we fill the world with hope. It's time that we create a place that our children's children can be proud of. A place that we have all come to know as planet Earth. Now it's time to go out and make the world a better place. There have been those that have gone on ahead of you. They've passed the baton. Their ceiling is now your platform to launch out into infinite possibilities. God wants to create a place that our children's children can be proud of. A place that we've all come to know as planet Earth. I want you to think about Earth as a speck of dust revolving in an infinite galaxy. And yet in this speck of dust, God so saw fit to put you here for such a time as this. Not that you can take up space, not that you can go to the grave never understanding your life's meaning, but that you would fully grasp his love for your life because it's his love for your life that combats fear where you're no longer consumer-driven to buy into this lie that humanity is falling apart, where you're no longer buying into the lie of all that the media is propagating, but yet you come in the spirit of love, and love is able to overcome all things. So I want you to grab right now a piece of paper, grab your phone, grab your laptop. I want to give you seven keys that are going to help you Make this year world class because keys give us access to something. When you have a key to somebody's house, you essentially have access into their house. And I believe God wants to give us keys to access things in his house, to access things in this world that others don't have access to because they don't have the key. So the first thing that I want you to write down is, You've got to conquer your greatest fear. Conquer it. Face fear for what it is. It's a lie that you have been bought into. And it costs you precious time, money, and the quality of life the longer you allow that fear to run rampant in your life. Think about fear as the tenant who doesn't pay your rent. Now, I don't know if you have any kind of rental property, but if there was a tenant that wasn't paying rent, sure, you're going to be kind and gracious and you're going to give them the time that they say that they would need to raise it. But after a while, if they're not going to pay you, then you would do whatever it took to get them out of your dwelling. And the same is true in our own dwelling, our own piece of real estate called this human body. We essentially, when we don't face our fears, are basically saying, hey, fear, 
You can take up space in my life and you don't have to pay any rent. In fact, I'm going to pay it with my time, with my money, with my quality of life. I'll even lose my mind over it. So you want to make sure that you conquer your greatest fear. The second thing I want you to take note of is you are what you eat. You are what you eat. If you're going to perform at peak performance, if you're going to be a world-class athlete, if you're going to take your business to another level, if you're going to love your spouse the way God intended you to love your spouse, then you've got to begin to feed your mind, your body, and your spirit quality things. Remember, when garbage comes in, it's not what goes into a man that makes him defiled. What makes a man defiled is what comes out of him. So make sure that you are adjusting your diet, not just physically foods, but you adjust your diet spiritually. You adjust your diet mentally. You adjust your diet relationally, whatever it is. Listen, if I'm always eating fast food, then I, I, I'm going to reap the consequences of that poor diet. I'm going to have health problems. And the same is true in anything that you take in life, relationships, finances, whatever it may be, if you are feeding that area bad things, then you are going to reap bad things out of that. And that's not what you want. You wouldn't be listening to this if you didn't want to take your life to another level. The third thing I want you to write down, but even more than write it down, I want you to get it in your heart, is contrary to what people may say or even think, this is the greatest time to be alive to start a business, and to execute a dream. Come on, guys. We've got to begin to believe that greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. It's time that you do what makes you come fully alive. I want you to take your hand, and I want you to put it over your heart. Do you feel that? What you feel right there in your heart is purpose. Embrace it and begin to live your life the way God intended you to live. The fourth thing that I want you to get is you got to begin to expect creativity and innovation to flow out of your life, your business, your dreams, your relationships, and even your family. You've got to begin to take the time to pull away from the craziness of this life. I mean, the average attention span of a mobile user is now under eight seconds. Now, in relation to that, think about a goldfish. A goldfish has more of an attention span than the average mobile user. We've got to begin to pull away, schedule blackout zones, and just get away and allow creativity to begin to flow through our lives. Because we are called to be creators, not just consumers. We are called to be producers. We are called to produce. We are called to create epic things in this life. So we're not just the guy that's sitting back or the girl that's sitting back flipping through the television and saying, I think I'm going to buy that and buy that. No, you and I are called to create things that bring change to society we got to stop mumbling, complaining, and offer real tangible solutions to humanity's ills. The fifth thing that I want you to get is it, it's so important to detoxify your mind, your heart, areas in your life that have been propagated and influenced by things of this world. Detoxify. Do whatever it takes to get the junk out of your trunk. Listen, if TV... Social media is causing you to worry or to live in fear? Turn it off. Turn it off. Easy enough, right? I know we can say how easy it is, but I know what it's like to lay my head down at night and want to reach for that phone and just be so influenced by what we see. But we are losing relationships that we have face-to-face -face every day. We are the most connected generation that has ever been alive, but yet we are the most loneliest people on the planet. It's time that we get back to face-to-face -to -face conversation. It's time that we begin to detoxify from the fear that the media has used to influence this planet. The sixth thing that I want you to understand is 
You've got to expand your mind. Let me say that again because it felt so good to say that. You have to expand, enlarge in your capacity to contain information. Information that gets you in the right formation for this coming season. And how do you do that? You've got to fill your mind with things that are healthy. I highly recommend picking up a classic book because a book can take you places you never imagined possible. This small change in lifestyle can have an exponential payoff in the long run because rarely will one's income exceed their personal development. Let me say that again, rarely, not always, but rarely Will your income exceed or go beyond your own personal development? So it's so important to expand your mind. Readers are leaders, and leaders are readers. The two are interchangeable, but it happens as we begin to expand our mind. The next thing that I want you to understand, and this is last but not least, is you got to feed your faith. You got to feed your faith. Stop living in fear. Faith is a lot like a muscle. You know, after a long hiatus of not going to the gym, somebody challenged me to get back to the gym. They wanted me to turn the flab into the abs. And my wife was like, heck yeah, you need to go to the gym. You need to get your body back into peak physical condition. Well, guess what? I had every excuse in the book why I didn't want to go to the gym. So what happened? They went to the gym and they bought me a membership to ensure that I had no excuses. And see, some of you need to have somebody in your life that loves you enough that's not going to give you any excuse not to begin to change your life. And you know, I I tell the guys every time I go to the gym, listen, you're going to get more of a workout by having me here because you're constantly taking off the plates because I work out with guys that are like in beast mode. And because of that, they're constantly taking off the plates But they're willing to do that because they want me to reap the results that are mine to for reaping. And the same is true for you. You've got to begin to work your faith. It's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. You're going to complain. But you need somebody right there saying, you can do this. Don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't walk away. You got this thing. You got to begin to feed your faith. You got to begin to talk to yourself. You got to begin to replace faith. Fear with faith. And you got to begin to allow faith to fill your heart with love so that you can begin to operate in the opposite spirit that is coming against the sons and daughters of this generation. You see, the more you exercise your faith, the stronger it becomes. You know, we live in a society where we want to look good. And there's nothing wrong with looking good. I'm all about it. But the reality is, I know a lot of good-looking people that if you were to see what they look like behind the exterior, they have no faith. They have no inner strength. They are weak. They are decrepit. They are something that we would utterly like, oh, I don't even want to get close to it. But yet we're around it all day long because we're attracted by our physical appearance, but we never take into consideration there is something deeper beyond that. And that is what is in the heart of a man. So I want to challenge you wherever you are to get back into the gym of life, to get your health back, to get your relationships back, to get your family back in order, to get your business to another level, to get your life moving in the direction that it needs to move, but you got to begin to work it by faith. It's not going to come with a silver spoon. It's not going to just be handed to you on a platter. You've got to put in the work required. Remember, what separates the masters from the mediocre mind is the hours that they put in, the 10,000 hours. Are you willing to start today to put in at least one hour, even if it's this week, put in one hour into that place of mastery so that you can perform at a world-class level. And I know it's not going to be easy because nothing in life worth having is easy. But over time, it's going to become a habit. See, you are today the sum total of your decisions. Man, some of us have made decisions that have put us in places of prominence. 
The small decisions that we did every day eventually became a habit, and now we're reaping the benefit. But others that are listening, they've made decisions that have not been so good. And because of that, they are reaping the consequences of that, and they are in a place that they don't desire to stay in. You have a choice. You have a choice to allow the situation that you face to break you down. Or you can say that you are going to use this situation to break through into another level. And I believe those listening are going to say yes to the breakthrough, to say yes to going to another level, to say yes to everything that God has for them. So my friend, we all have a choice. Will we continue to play small? And that's okay because you're powerful and I respect you. But for those of us that are fed up with where we are and realizing that we need to change, if for nothing else, for the generations to come, then I want to challenge you the way that I've been challenged to face your greatest fear and to make the plunge. Because I would rather die than live my life in unbelief. So my friend, from my heart to yours, I believe in you, the real you, the one that you were intended to be. Now it's time for you to believe in yourself and begin to do the work to get the results. Much love. Thank you for joining us for today's podcast. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And as always, stay tuned for more content to come.